Hi, so um, today I'm going to talk about um, lack of about sleep and its importance when it comes to gaining weight and trying to lose the weight. Sleep is directly linked to, numerous studies show that sleep is directly linked to our difficulty or finding it difficult to lose weight. And this is completely um, understandable when you think about sometimes the difficulties that some women ex experience when they've had just had a baby and they can't shift the weight because they're just exhausted. Now this is, lack of sleep causes a few hormonal dis disturbances and these hormones are so important in regulating how we, um, how we, how full we become and our hunger. What's more is it actually causes us to store more fat than what we normally would do. Add that to the fact that we actually don't make as many good choices as what we normally would. Um, so you're probably more likely to go for the biscuits and the sugary, high sugary carbohydrates than high protein because that's, that's how your body makes you feel. This is due to your gut bacteria. So it's a whole orchestra of different um, things that come into play. But basically I wanted to tell you that if you're not sleeping well and it's something that you can't do anything about at the moment because you're having a baby, give yourself a bit of an easy time just because, not saying go to the biscuit cupboard, but just you know allow yourself that it's not always so easy. Um, so you may be doing everything that you think is right as per my instructions or that I've given you the guide and the, the exercise, but nothing's working. And the sleep is so important. Um, they found, actually studies have found 55% difference in the weight in, in a sleep deprived person and a person that slept well, how their, their ability to lose weight. So don't beat yourself up. Having said that, there are a few things that you can do to try and get yourself into a good sleep routine. So the first one would be, um, <coughs> excuse me, the first one would be taking out all devices or anything like that from your bedroom. Now I know that's pretty, pretty full on, Failing that, have a devices, but don't touch them for half an hour before you go to bed. Now, a lot of people like to read their Kindle or their iPad before they go to sleep or just check their Facebook. And I completely see where you're going, but what happens is your body it stimulates your body your, and your brain to wake up. And that light that's emitted um, actually causes your brain to wake up. So you find, you'll find it a lot more difficult to sleep. So if you can try and knock off half an hour um, before bed, knock off all the electrical devices. Um, try and have the lights a little bit dimmer. It does not for romantic purposes, but try and not have big bright lights that are going to stimulate your brain and prevent you from falling asleep. The second one would be go to bed, um, get into a routine and going to, of going to bed at the same time and waking up at the same time. I know that again that none of these are easy, but they are doable. And if you can start to um, get into a routine, into a pattern. Your body loves that pattern and it will respond accordingly. Um, a lot of people, I think, get up in the middle of the night or have broken sleep and that's just as bad as, as no sleep. So by doing that, by getting yourself, your body in a routine, it's more likely that it's gonna get, it's gonna, it's gonna know what to expect and when to do your REM sleep and when your light sleep. So I strongly suggest that. The next one is gonna be meditate before bed. Now meditation sounds a bit hoo-ha and it doesn't have to be like that either. Um, it simply means breathing, so having a bit of time for yourself. So if you can go to sleep and just for five minutes and just do a few deep breaths. Breaths again sound, don't sound very um, exciting but it is so beneficial. Physiologically there's a big difference in when you take a deep breath and when you take a shallow. So the shallow breath breaths are associated with stress and a lot of hormones, stress hormones in our body. Now the deep breath, you'll actually notice that there's a distinctive, well I think, but it's been proven, distinctive change in your brain when you have deep belly breaths. So breathe in through your nose, right to the pit of your belly, and do it in a controlled manner. Now try and do this for a couple of minutes before sleep. And if you are really trying to, your body's fighting that focus, of breathing in, breathing out, think of something really nice. So think of something that you want for the next month to happen. So for example, it might be your, a holiday or it might be 
a shopping spree. Well, okay, let's not go with shopping. But something that you really want, maybe it's just to get into a size pair of size 12 or 14 jeans. And just think about that and how it makes you feel. And you'll actually notice your, your brain's so powerful that it'll elicit those responses. You might even get butterflies in your tummy. Um, just because it's so powerful, those thoughts, if, if it's something that you really desire so much. So try that out before bed. I suggest getting up but as well, but try that before you go to bed. And that will help you put you into a, into a deeper sleep um, a little bit quicker. Okay, so they're my top tips. Not very, not very, um, or actually no, I think they are helpful. Um, but let me know how you get on. And like I said, sleep is... Don't, there's huge, there's so many studies that sleep deprivation um, is the same, is, it prevents us from losing weight and helps us to gain weight. Because I, I'm sure you know, and I'm the same, is once I've had a bad night's sleep, I'm clutching at chocolate. I'm not a cho chocolate person for a while. Um, and the, mo the first time I noticed how much chocolate I could eat was after my first child because I couldn't lose the weight. And I was eating chocolate because I'm wanting that energy flush from the rich carbohydrates, but also because I'm tired, my body doesn't know, um, sort of you could equate it similar to when you're drunk, is your inhibitions go and you don't, you, know, you can have chips and gravy and not really care about it. Um, whereas when you're, when you're sober, you're, you're quite good at judgment and your judgment actually goes out of the window when you're sleep deprived, hence why you shouldn't be sleep, uh, driving when you're sleeping. So <coughs> consider that and try and take a few of those steps to try and get a good night's sleep, okay?